Diversity and inclusion or inclusivity, it means the ability to, to be different and to be accepted for that difference, to be able to express my, my full self, my authentic self to the world without a mask on. It's understanding that everyone is unique and in their uniqueness, they're beautiful. To be my full self everywhere, I don't have to censor myself. Diversity in the first place was just getting a seat at the table, being employed in the company for me. But then now the inclusion came. We had another event in the office, which was sort of like a pride day, which the whole office participated. The workplace is very interesting space. There's expectation of professionalism, right? There's that expectation of uh, what you wear. Uh, there's how you speak, how you sound, your sexuality. I find them problematic in the sense of, it basically says, leave a part of you outside and then show up as a different person. Your ability to be your full self is being infringed on. Your happiness is taken away from you. You have to make so many adjustments inside the workplace and outside the workplace. Kenya, it's one of the most homophobic societies. When I joined this company, which was straight out of uni, uh, the first thing I did is when I applied, they had that statement that I see in most companies these days where we don't discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation race, gender, and all that. But when I got offers, I got three offers, and now choosing, I only chose the one which was specifically uh, vocal about the LGBT issues. Uh, we have harsh laws for uh, LGBTIQ persons, uh, where you can face up to 14 years in jail. As a business, because you want to be legal, uh, so you, any LGBTQ person who comes in, then it's treated almost like illegal. You don't have to live one way with your family, one way at the workplace, one way with your friends, one way with your lovers, one way at church, one way in the mosque. Some of the excuses that organizations make is hiding behind the cultural aspect of it, saying that it would ruffle too many feathers, it's not in our African culture to discuss that. So they feel just because maybe they say, um, we have, we accept all people at the workplace in their diversity that they feel that that covers um, different identities such as queer identities, but in reality it doesn't. Uh, being queer is not in our African culture, which is obviously not true, but at the same time, there are a lot of misconceptions, there are a lot of lies going around, a lot of harmful stereotypes, and everyone is buying into it. Most of the time, diversity and inclusion has been seen from a racial angle, a black and white or um, nationality angle, or age or gender. But diversity and inclusion should also include sexual orientation. So that discussion should be there because there's a lot of myths on what an LGBTQ person is, what they're like. Uh, people think it's the the drag queen, you know, a man who wears a female's clothes, and that's the understanding, you know, it's the effeminate person. But it's really not. It's your doctor, it's your professor, it's your politician, it's sometimes even your pastor. Some Kenyan companies which say, we haven't even achieved gender equality, so why would we focus on diversity? Or we haven't looked at the differently abled people yet, so why would we be focusing on diversity? I was interviewing for um, a big company, and until the final stages of the interview, um, one of the managers uh, uh, said to me, with your voice, I don't think you can work here. And everything was reduced to that. And so I never ended up getting the job, however smart I was. That bias continues to be very pervasive. Labels are put in an organization to enrich the discussion, not to be used against us, not to be said that because you are, you can't. We have to address every single inequality. And at some point, this will mean us addressing the diversity and inclusion gap. Because there's a lot of people who 
would not come out and so because they know if they came out it will hinder their promotions. Diversity gap continues because people are thinking they are helping you because they are thinking uh, if we hired him he won't fit in with this society because he'll just have a hard time here. There are some organizations that are doing a fantastic job but there are some organizations that do not want to recognize that even in our community, we are diverse. They've decided to accept the very wrong statement that LGBTI rights are a non-issue. And if organizations are not willing to take the bold step to change policies, to change laws, then I, need, I think we need to bring the conversation down to you and me. Let's be willing to give kindness and love and acceptance a chance. The Colorful Workplaces program uh, provides a real opportunity for change. There's so much power and benefit. Colorful Workplaces is definitely doing something that's different, something that's worthwhile. I've gone through the training and I was amazed. The conferences should just be to kickstart the conversation. Maybe they could partner with other organizations that can carry now beyond such events. For example, the, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance spoke on um, gay equality or just uh, equality and rights for everyone. Then the government will have to listen because they support the economy. In fact, in Kenya, it can be just one kind of a big company chosen, said, and spoke with one voice in that area. It changes the whole narrative. As organizations, we need to realize one thing. Diversity and inclusion is a smart thing to do. For a business, it's a profitable thing to do. We can only change the society one person at a time. It's not just the laws that need to change because the laws don't change the people's mindset. If you start having that discussion, you open the doors for them to understand more because most of the hate comes from a place of ignorance. And it's important that there are consequences to not treating people with dignity at the workplace. In this same model that we use to apply to racism, sexual harassment, hair discrimination, which is becoming a conversation right now, this same model can be applied to uh, conversations on diversity and inclusion with a specific focus on LGBTQ plus persons. Success for me, in terms of diversity and inclusion 10 years from now, means that every queer person at the workplace is able to have their partner covered by the organization's health insurance. Um, you're able to speak about your partner at work, you're able to bring them in the workplace. For me to be to reach a place where gay people are not treated as gay people but as people so it's not gay marriage but just marriage is not uh, adoption for gay people but just adoption for. We all want to be happy, we all want to live purposeful and meaningful lives, we all want uh, success however much, however we define success. And if people didn't speak up, we wouldn't have a Black Lives Matter. And therefore, we must have the courage, we must be brazen, and we must be able to speak up. LGBTI rights are human rights. I will speak up, I will be unapologetic, I will be loud, I will be proud. Unfortunately, it's not easy but I'll do it. I'll add my voice to the cause.